Right, we've been uh, looking at the leg, haven't we, the last couple of weeks. So, since we've done the posterior compartment, I sure thought we should do the anterior compartment and have a look at what's in there. And then that would leave the lateral compartment, which, even if I talked about the lateral compartment in a video on its own, would probably be less than two minutes, even with all my waffling. So we'll do the anterior and lateral compartments of the leg. and we'll look at the muscles, and we'll just remind ourselves about the nerves and the arteries in there. All right? You're not very flexible. Kill, there we go. So just a reminder about the bones. Now here's the nice big tibia, the weight-bearing bone of the leg. Um, huge rabid condyles up here, look, that's, this is the bone that's really articulating with the knee and taking the force from the femur, or transmitting the force to the femur, depending upon which way you look at it. Uh, and here's the slender fibula. And look, there's the big toe. Little toes bent. There's the little toe, so this is lateral. This is the big toe, so this is medial. So, tibia, fibula, head of the fibula is probably a notable thing. Remember that between these bones we have an interosseous membrane in here, and we'll see a number of our muscles attached to that. So an interosseous membrane is literally a membrane between the bones, interosseous. Um, and then down here we have this bony bit being the medial malleolus of the tibia, and this bony bit being the lateral malleolus of the fibula. We'll see some of the muscles attached to the medial cuneiform of the great toe. These are the metatarsals here, so we've got some, some, some muscles going around medially, some going around laterally, and some going over the top. Also remember the movements of the foot. So this is the dorsal surface, this is the plantar surface. So if we lift the foot like this, so if we're lifting the toes up, that's dorsiflexion. If we're standing on tiptoes, that's plantar flexion. And if we invert our foot like this, this is inversion. So that means we're putting more weight on this lateral metatarsal here, the fifth metatarsal. And if we move the foot this way, this is eversion. Now we can do quite a bit of inversion, but only a little bit of eversion. Um, and Whereas this is all pinned together, in fact, most of those movements of inversion and eversion occur in the bones down here, in the bones of the foot, the bones of the tarsus. Whereas when we do it on this skeleton, it looks like most of the movement is up here at this joint. Some of the movement occurs there, but most of it occurs down here. I don't think I'll take me uh, socks and shoes off for that one. All right. So that's a reminder of the bones. So... Right, let's have a look at the anterior compartment first. And now really we've got one, two, three, there are two muscles overlapping each other here, and four, there's a fourth muscle in there. Is it on this model? Not really. So the question is, how do you work out what's what? Well, I always start with the shin bone, right? Didn't squeak. So look, there's the tibia. That's your shin bone, isn't it? That's the that's the, the bony bit here, right? The bony bit of your shin is, is your tibia here. Look, it's naked here. It's got some fashion stuff over it, but there's no muscle protecting it. So there's your tibia and your shin. So then the first muscle you come to, look, we're going from medial to lateral. So the first muscle then is lateral to the tibia, to your shin bone. This is tibialis anterior. And we saw tibialis posterior in the posterior compartment, didn't we? And tibialis anterior is coming from, you got the condyles that we saw of the tibia up here. So it's coming from the lateral tibial condyle, the lateral part of the tibia. It's attached to that interosseous membrane and it's kind of running across from lateral to medial across the anterior compartment. And then the tendon down here is tied down by these retinaculum and it runs down to the medial cuneiform bone and to the base of the first metatarsal. That means that, for one, it's going to be a muscle of dorsiflexion, as are all of the muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg, but also tibialis anterior can work with tibialis posterior, and together they will both invert the foot, right? 
Uh, so that's tibia on the anterior. Then next to it, right, more super, we've got two layers here, two layers of muscle. And most superficially, if we look at this muscle, we can see it comes down here and it becomes a whole bunch of tendons. Oh, look, and it's continuous with these tendons running to these four toes, so, so not to the great toe. So this muscle then is extensor digitorum longus, because there are some brevis intrinsic, there's a brevis intrinsic muscle. So we find the longus versions up here and the brevis versions in here. That means that again, this muscle is going to dorsiflex the foot, but it's also going to extend the toes, right? I'm not taking my shoes and socks off to demonstrate that, but you get the idea, right? It's going to pull on the tops of the toes, so it's going to extend the toes. So extensor digitorum longus is also coming from the lateral condyle of the tibia up here and the tibia and intraosseous membrane. And then it's running down to the foot and to these toes down here as tendons, also tied down by this retinaculum. Now, the, the other muscle that's with it is going to extend the big toe. Um, and this muscle is deeper, so it's actually attached to the fibula uh, and probably the interosseous membrane. And this muscle then is, is extensor hallucis longus, because this one, I can just see down here, and there are two layers of muscle here. It's not very easy to see, but we've got a little muscle here. That's, so extensor hallucis longus is deep to extensor digitorum longus. And that runs as a tendon out to the great toe, the big toe down here. So that's two muscles that we've got here in this strip, overlying one another, right? And then we have a, we have a fourth muscle, um, which probably isn't present. It's peroneus or fibularis tertius. So tertius meaning it's the third one. So we've got two other fibularis muscles. Remember fibularis and peroneus muscles, the terms there are interchangeable. They both refer to the fibula, to the pin of the fibula. I like to use fibularis because it's clearer. If we say peroneal, we might mix that up with perineal, which is up, up up there, right? That's a perineal nerve and the perineal region's up there, right? Whereas down here we have the peroneal muscles or fibularis muscles. Now, fibularis tertius is a muscle of the anterior compartment, um, but it kind of blends with other muscles and I just don't think it's present on this model. It's a little ditty thing and the fibularis tertius will run again from the fibula and a bit of the interosseous membrane and is deep to all of these guys and blends with, blends with some of these other muscles. But it's going to run around to, this is the fifth toe, it's going to run around to the base of the fifth metatarsal. You can see these other two muscles which we're going to talk about in a minute doing that. But. So fibularis tertius, in principle, runs from the fibula to the base of the fifth metatarsal, which means that it, it can help with dorsiflexion, but it's particularly, pretty weedy. We can pull the outer part of the foot, the lateral part of the foot upwards to help with the eversion. So the four muscles of the anterior compartment are tibialis anterior, extensor digitorum longus, and extensor hallucis longus. And those three are fairly reasonable um, dorsiflexors of the foot. Um, and then we have uh, fibularis tertius. Now, we're talking, you know, plantar flexion, standing on your toes is a really powerful action. We have these big muscles in the cuff which deal with plantar flexion. And this is what gives us the power in our gait and, and that sort of thing. And whilst the muscles of dorsiflexion are not so big and you might seem less important and certainly are less powerful, they're still very important in gait. Because every time you swing your foot through, you need to lift your toes up. Uh, not only lift your toes up to swing your foot through, but you also then need to slowly lower, so you're eccentrically contracting these dorsiflexing muscles to, to lower the toes to the floor. So instead of slap, slap, slapping your feet along, well you might slap, slap, slap your feet along, um, but, but instead of slapping your feet as you walk, you place your toes and place your toes, and it all adds up to the efficiency and smoothness of the gait cycle. So the dorsiflexes are quite important with that. So um, yeah, if, if these muscles aren't working properly, um, say if the nerve to them is damaged, then you would um, 
have to lift your knee higher, you'd uh, maybe drag your toes along, you'd have a big effect on your gait, right? So the nerve of the anterior compartment, we looked at the other week, didn't we? Um, it's in here, and the nerve is the deep fibular nerve, and the artery that's running with it is the anterior tibial artery. And the anterior tibial artery gets in here by passing through that interosseous membrane and pops out into this anterior compartment. Both of those continue into the foot. Now the, the lateral compartment is here. And because there's no fascia, no con connective tissue clearly demarcating these compartments, it's a little difficult to see. But this is the anterior compartment here. And then the lateral compartment is the smallest compartment. There's really not much to it. We've got a couple of muscles running down here. And again, running down into the foot. We've got two muscles sensibly named fibularis longus and fibularis brevis, hence why the other one is called fibularis tertius. So fibularis longus is running from the head of the fibula, that's the, the bony bit you can feel up here, you can palpate this on yourself on the, this is lateral leg, right? So fibularis longus runs from the superior part of the fibula and from the head of the fibula and then in fact it, it's, it's superficial to fibularis brevis and this tendon runs around, look, this is the lateral malleolus of the fibula here, it runs posterior to that and then it hooks underneath the foot and it runs all the way under the foot to get across to the medial cuneiform again and to the base of the first metatarsal. Um, and fibularis brevis then is more inferior and it's shorter so that's coming from the, the distal or the inferior part of the fibula bone and this you can see the tendon here it just runs again posterior to the lateral malleolus and goes to the, um, the, the fifth metatarsal down here so both of those muscles then are obviously going to aid in eversion in lifting the lateral part of the foot up and they can also because they're running uh, posterior to the lateral malleolus it means they've got a bit of leverage and they can also aid in plantar flexion but you know you've got much bigger muscles than that now in our feet we can we can invert our foot quite a long way but we can only invert our foot a little way you might want to try that whenever i try and demonstrate it i can demonstrate inversion really easily but eversion not so easily I can't get my foot up. Um, now, the real importance of eversion is kind of as a counter to inversion. Uh, uh, okay, what I mean is, is that the, these muscles that are eversing the foot, what they're actually doing is they're working in opposition to the muscles that are inverting the foot. So when they're pulling on the foot to stabilise it for inversion, the everting muscles are working against them and further stabilizing the ankle. So, that, do you know what I mean? So that the, the inverting muscles have got something else to pull against so they don't go too, f yeah, do you know what I mean? Because in the leg here, if you're balancing on one foot and you step on one foot every time you walk, you lift a foot off the ground and so on. So these muscles are very much about balance on one foot and uh, standing and what have you. So the muscles that are everting and inverting and plantar flexion and dorsiflexion around the ankle are all there to help you balance and give you that smoothness of gait as you walk. So that's really what's going on here with eversion. These muscles are countering the, the inverting muscles. But that's the lateral compartment, fibularis brevis and fibularis longus up here. And the tendons actually run through um, a single synovial sheath, I think. So there's a synovial sheath there to make the movement of the tendons around there smooth, smoother, more smoothly. Um, now, with the lateral compartment of the leg, there is a nerve, the superficial fibular nerve innervates these muscles. Um, and you remember that the superficial and deep fibular nerves innervating these two compartments then are branches of the common fibular nerve that divides after it goes over the head of the fibula. We talked about that in that other video. But, well, I can't take this off, can I? <laughs> but there, there's no artery to this um, to the lateral compartment. Instead, the, uh, the blood supply to this compartment is, is from perforating ar arteries, so perforating branches from other arteries nearby um, perforate into this compartment and supply these muscles with blood. There's no, no artery in there. Um, whereas the anterior compartment has the anterior tibial artery and the posterior compartment has the posterior tibial artery. All right, so if you're looking for another artery of that compartment, you won't really find one. Okay, 
So that's it, that's, those are the structures of the anterior compartment of the leg and the lateral compartment of the leg, and there's that other video about the posterior compartment. In the anterior compartment, we've got four muscles. These are muscles that are largely dorsiflexing the foot. Uh, and the lateral compartment, then we have two muscles, uh, and these are largely everting the foot. Um, and when we're considering all of these muscles of the leg, we're really considering inversion, eversion, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, and how all these work in opposition and work together to let us stand on the foot, because we can even stand one-legged, right? To give us balance in the gait cycle, um, and balance even when we're standing as well. Okay. Shockingly straightforward, I hope. Right, see you guys next week.